Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 32 of our BDD video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about historical extent report with Specflow and Selenium C Sharp. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 29, 30 and 31 because this video is going to be a complete continuation of those three parts. And you can see there is an exclusive logo in our presentation over here. It's because this is the first time ever in the internet we are going to talk about an historical extent report, which is nothing but the CLOV report for the extent reporting system. So this has never been discussed anywhere in the internet so far and there is no video available in YouTube as of now. So we are going to see this for the first time in internet right now. All right, so let's get started. We discuss a lot of nitty-gritty details on executing test and executing extent reporting and leveraging the power of spec flow in part 29, 30 and 31. The report we generated earlier was an HTML report which was offline and every time while the test executes, new HTML file will be generated. It's not going to be appending the existing HTML file but it will be generating a new HTML file every time while we run our test. The problem is this, every time while we run the test, it generates a new report and we cannot retrieve the historical report by any means because every time it's going to be a new file and if you want to go back and look at what was the 10 runs before the test run that we were executing, you cannot go there because there is no historical report. So the solution for this problem is CLOW reporting. So the CLOW report is an report server for extent report API and it is a complete replacement for the legacy extent X reporting system. So Clo has replaced the legacy extent X reporting system. It is really cool because it's very very simple compared to the extent X and it is very very handy as well. So we'll be discussing about that. So how does this Clo report actually works? Well Clo report API is going to be a new class. You can just use that and uh, that package is going to be available along with the extent report NuGet package that we installed earlier. Clo reporter is the class name. And once we have this uh, Clo reporter, then we need to connect this to the MongoDB. Again, all these data are going to be stored in a Mongo database, not in the SQL database. It is going to be the Mongo database, which is going to store all the Clow report. So basically you need to have a MongoDB instance running in our machine so that it stores all the data over there. And this is the clow.initMongoDB connection of the local host is going to be the local host of the Mongo. And 27017 is the default port number for the Mongo database. So this is how we can first configure our Clow reporter to the Mongo database connection string. And then we need to attach the reporter as we did for the HTML reporter. As you can see in the screenshot over there, it already has the HTML reporter. Along with that, we also need to add the Clow. So meaning we can keep on adding any number of uh, reporter systems available there. So Clow has also been added. So once everything is there, then we need to start a jar file, which is the Clow server. So the Clow server is going to be acting as an intermediate between the Mongo database and the request we are going to access from the web browser. So once we access the Clow report from the uh, local host of any default port that we specified, then automatically it is going to generate a report for us, something like this. So this report that you are seeing right now is going to be looking a little bit like the extent report, but it is an historical report. So this is how we can generate the historical report using the CLO report in the extent reporting system. So we'll be discussing everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is our same code that we have been discussing so long in our mini series so far. And so far, what we discussed is this. We created the HTML reporter and then we attach the reporter, the HTML reporter, and then we could able to generate the offline HTML reporter. But now we are going to make use of what is called as a CLOW reporter. So we need to create one more private variable this time. And this private variable is going to have the uh, variable instance variable for the CLOW reporter. So you can see that 
I just use the clove here and it just works fine. The reason is because the clove reporter class is available along with the extend report class itself, right? So the package is already available there. And then we need to create the clove reporter. So for creating the clove reporter, all we have to do is this. So we can just do this clove is equal to new clove reporter. And also we need to initialize the MongoDB connection, right? So we need to do this clove dot init MongoDB connection. So as I said, once you have a MongoDB in your uh, machine, you need to specify the local host and the default port is always 207017. Uh, so that's the port number, right? And then we can specify an optional project name here. Well, it is not optional though. You have to specify the project name so that it will identify that, okay, this is the uh, project that we can execute. So the test we can execute this time is an execute automation uh, uh, test, something like that. So this is our project. And then we're going to specify the reporter name here as well. You can specify anything you want. So clove dot, you can see there are so many things available. Uh, I'm just going to specify uh, the reporter name, uh, something like uh, Karthik. And then I'm going to just specify the date time dot now dot to string and then you can hit the control dot uh, so using systems there you go and then we can add this clove reporter uh, over here so it's going to be clove right so everything is over here available that's it that's the only thing i have to do here apart from the whole code change that i have did that's it so this is the only code change the code change is very, very minimal compared to what we have discussed because we already have the complete infrastructure of generating the report. So automatically, this API is going to work with a Clove reporter without making any further code change. So this is the only code change in the Clove reporter side. But as I said, we need to have the MongoDB and then we need to also download the Clove uh, jar file so that you can talk with the uh, database, uh, the Mongo database and generate the report in the UI, right? So I have already downloaded them, but you can download that from uh, from the Clove reporter. So basically what I did is this. So you can just go to Clove uh, report. You can see uh, this is the GitHub link. You can go over here and you can see there is something called as download the latest copy uh, from the xnreports.com. So you can see this is the uh, Clow download. You can download this version. Uh, it's 0.1.0. I guess this is a very, very uh, uh, latest version and it is still in beta stage kind of stuff. So probably you can download that over here. So you can see extend X is now obsolete, right? So you can download this jar file. I have already downloaded it. And then you also need to download the Mongo database so that you can connect it, right? And then you can start running it. If you have uh, a Redis, uh, you can also use the Redis here for the catch. But I, I'm not going to use the Redis and all the stuff here because I'm just going to run in my local machine. All right. All right. So as I said, I already have MongoDB and I have extracted that Mongo database, uh, downloaded. Uh, I think the latest version you can use or maybe you can use 3.17 version if they have specified that. I guess it's specified somewhere here, uh, right? Oh, not 3.7. It is actually 3.2. Other versions may not work correctly. So you need to install the MongoDB version 3.2 specifically, not any latest version or something like that. So I already have the MongoDB. So I'm just going to go over here. So you can see I have version 3.2, right? I'm just going to go over there and go to the bin and then you have to run this mongod uh, dot exe so this will start the mongo database and then you need to start the clow reporting server maybe even later once the test is executed or you can start even now so i have downloaded the uh, clow reporting server uh, jar file in my machine already so i'm just going to open that as well so it's sitting under clow and then java hyphen jar of clo uh, 0 0.1.0 0 .0 jar so as you can see it is starting the uh, clo 
uh, jar which is the closed server so once it is connected you might have seen that there is a connection handshake happened here so meaning it is now talking to uh, the mongo server right so everything is over here it's all good now now we have to run the test and we can generate the report right so i'm just gonna save the test and then why not just run all of them uh, so that we can uh, generate the report so let's see what's going to happen so every time the test runs you can see that uh, it is going to uh, create a connection over here and then uh, it will also insert the report so you can see that something happened here it generated the connection with three three and four so meaning something is happening in this department so the test is currently running i think we are getting an error and the error is because we actually have to specify the clo url as well so if you don't specify the clo uh, server url uh, we are going to get this kind of uh, error so actually i missed that so we need to add that as well because without this particular clo server url you cannot be able to uh, actually run the test so this is a mandatory field as well so you can see over here in the test explorer uh, it actually times out and you can see that it is not giving the exact reason for the timeout but the test is actually failing because of this reason all right so if i try to run this test alone you can see that the test got passed here by running them in 13 seconds so uh, now if i try to run everything so it's all because of uh, value that we need to add in here right for the clo report uh, the clo url so now once we have this you can see the test is actually running without any problem there you go i guess everything is executing without any problem so you can see that that's cool and now if I uh, go to URL here and then if I search for uh, if I navigate to localhost uh, colon 80 or maybe if I just put something like that so this is automatically going to take us to the CLO report so you can see that this is localhost slash project so basically this is the project which we just inserted the execute automation test project and now if I hit go, you can see that it is going to bring a nice little dashboard here. So this is actually coming from our CLO reporter, right? So you can see that it has uh, executed uh, some test here and there is a build performance and there is a failure and all those stuff. And then you can see the builds. So it's going to show us some of the builds. So I executed three times. So it's all saying that moments ago here. And there is a six minutes ago so every time it executes so this time the last time that we executed is like three test runs and there are like pass fail and uh, skip so there are some uh, failures and all those stuff here so it's all information available here so if I click this particular stuff it also shows a very very uh, nice report so you can see that this is really cool this time all these data are actually sitting as an historical report and we can now see the historical information here so this was not something which was available before with the extent report but now we can store all of them as an historical report so that we can view that and we can use it for our uh, historical purpose so this is really really cool and this one is the most important and most requested feature as well because for some reason we are not going to always relay on the offline report but the extent report just going to be a historical report something like this is going to be very very helpful for long run so i guess this is really really cool so this is the clo report and once again this is the first video on internet which talks about clo report so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day